So here we are again on Kitely for the book reading. There was no book reading last week, uh, so we're starting from where we were the week before last. Okay, uh, so in the document, I've just given you the link. You need to look at you need to look for that part. Okay, that's where we'll be starting from today. Okay, tough guys joining us. How come tough guy never gets the teleport offers? But anyway, I'll have to send him a message because for some reason I can't teleport him anywhere. Okay, so hopefully he'll join us in a moment. But uh, we will begin because we've got two weeks to catch up on, really. <laughs> Eleanor. Uh, whenever you are ready, if you would like to start reading, that would be great. Uh, I'm ready and uh, it was uh, who are you? Who are you and don't get angry, okay? You don't know. Don't know, yes, this is the next, this is the next line, okay, yeah. I'll start. <laughs> you don't know, it said, well... I knew the world, the world had changed, but, well, really, do you mean to tell me seriously you don't know a summit when you see one? A summit? That's Greek to me. So it is to everyone, said the creature sharply. Well, in plain English, then, a sand fairy. Don't you know a sand fairy when you see one? It looked so grieved and had that Jane hastened to say, Of course I see you are now. It's quite plain no one comes to look at you. You came to look at me several sentences ago, it said crossly, beginning to curl up again in the sand. Oh, don't go away again. Do talk some more, Robert cried. I didn't know you were a sand fairy, but I knew directly I saw you that you were much the wonderfulest thing I'd ever seen. The sand fairy seemed a shade less disagreeable after this. It isn't talking I mind, it said, as long as you're, re you're reason reasonably civil. But I'm not going to make polite conversation for you. If you talk nicely to me, perhaps I answer you, and perhaps I won't. Now say something. Of course no one could think of anything to say, but at last Robert thought of how long have you lived here, and he said it at once. For ages, several thousand years, replied the summit. Tell us about it, do. It's all in books. Your aunt, Jane said, or oh, tell us everything you can about yourself. We don't know anything about you and you are so nice. The sand fairy smoothed his long rat like whiskers and smiled between them. Do please tell, said the children all together. It is wonderful how quickly you get used to things, even the most astonishing. Five minutes before, the children had had no more idea than you had that there was such a thing as a sand fairy in the world, that now they were talking to it as though they had known it all their lives. It was eyes in and said, How very sunny it is, quite like old times. Where do you get your megatheriums from now? What? said the children all at once. It is very difficult always to remember that what is not polite, especially in moments of surprise and agita or agitation. A pterodactyl is plentiful now, the sun fairy went on. The children were unable to reply. What do you have for breakfast? The fairy said impatiently, and who gives it to you? Eggs and bacon and bread and milk and porridge and things. Mother gives it to us. Oda Mega, what's its names and Tero, what do you call them? And does anyone have them for breakfast? 
Why, almost everyone had pterodactyl for breakfast in my time. Pterodactyls were something like crocodiles and something like bats. I believe they were very good grilled. You see, it was like this. Of course, there were heaps of sand fairies then, and in the morning early you went out and hunted for them, and when you'd found one, it gave you your wish. People used to send the little boys down to the seashore in the morning before breakfast to get the day's wishes, and very often the eldest boy in the family would be told to wish for a megatherium, ready jointed for cooking. It was as big as an elephant, you see, so there was a good deal of meat on it. And if they wanted fish, the ichthyosaurus was asked for. He was twenty to forty feet long, so there was plenty of him. And for peltry there was the plesiosaurus. There were nice picklings on the too. Then the other children could wish for other things, but when people had dinner parties, it was nearly always megatheriums and ichthyosaurus, because his fins were a great delicacy and his tail made soup. A lot of tasty stuff. Okay, Lynn, do you hear me now, Lynn? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yes, because I... So, very nicely read, and um, just a couple of words for you, Eleanor. Okay, oh, don't panic. <laughs> okay, the first one, um, actually, we'll go to the words, and then we'll do the stress in a moment. Okay. Uh, okay. Bear with me. I've just got to do a little bit of cut and paste, of course. So the first one is smoothed. Ah. Silent E, not smooth ed. Smoothed. Smooth. Yeah. yeah, so she picking, smoothed yeah, her clothes. Picking, yeah. yeah, she smoothed her dress because um, it was creased. So creased and smoothed. <laughs> okay. And then pickings, hey. not picklings, yeah, pickings. Was, yes. Okay, have you ever heard of the term slim pickings? No, I haven't. Okay, it just means there was not nothing. There wasn't much there. Okay, there was slim pickings at breakfast. Uh, it was. It would mean there's not a lot there, or um, you weren't. You weren't very successful in getting what you wanted. Okay, slim pickings. So not picklings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very silly one. Okay, I think that was fun. I, I enjoyed hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fun. and pickling, pickling oh. is really nice. But pickling is actually a verb. Pickles is the noun. Yeah, a pickle. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Um, a pickles, pickle. Yes. Cucumbers. And pickles. Um, yeah. if you're eating a lot of different types of pickles, so a pickled onion is countable. Yeah, a pickled onion and a jar of pickles would be like a mixture of different things that have been pickled. And the verb is to pickle. Okay, to pickle. I, I don't pickle things very often. It's very popular at the moment. Pickled everything in the high class restaurants. You know, you're eating something really delicious and suddenly you'll taste a bit of beetroot or carrot and it's been pickled. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. the chefs have gone mad for pickling. Unpleasant surprise. <laughs> no. Like <laughs> Not at all. Uh, but slim pickings, pickings in this context is like the slim pickings, as in um, there wasn't much there. Okay. Then um, the next one is about stress, okay? I don't remember. He goes on about history. Your it's aunt. in the history books. You aren't, not you aren't, 
but oh, you yeah, aren't. Be. As in, yeah, lots of stuff in the history books. Never read about you, mate. <laughs> so it would be stressed on the you. You aren't. As in, you aren't in the history books. Okay. You aren't. That's it. Yes. You aren't yeah. would be more if he'd said, I'm in the history books. And they'd say, you aren't. As in, we've never read about you. But he says, it's all in the history books. So it's him in particular. The Sand Fairy isn't. OK, you aren't. And then the last one, I've got to correct it. And I know you're going to do it again. That. That yep. there was such oh, yeah. a thing, not it's than. Everything. It definitely came across then there was such a thing. That. Okay, so tr say the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. That there was such a thing. That there was such a thing. That's it. Good, good, good. Okay, any questions? Anybody got a question about that part of the text? Oh, and, and thanks. I think you're reading from the same book as me now, Eleanor, as well, because it was all... Yes, of Yay. course. <laughs> Good, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for that. Does It does make my life a lot easier. <laughs> I know it's not your job to make my life easier, but it just does. Um, April, any questions Any before you start then? Uh, my up. question <laughs> is... Oh. Where do I have to start if I have to start? Because my, I have a problem with my computer or oh, my no. browser. I don't know. Every time I lost my line. Uh, okay. There must have okay. been heaps. Ah, okay. I see Is that, that okay? Yeah, I have one. Okay, it. good. Whenever you're ready. Uh, may I start or yes. anybody else has no, As questions? soon as you're ready. I've given most of the link, so... <laughs> Okay. Uh, there must have been heaps and heaps of cold meat left over, said Antia, who, me who meant to be a g good housekeeper someday. Oh no, said the Samit. Samit, that would never have done. Why, of course, at sunset, what was left over turned into stone. You find the stone bones of the megatherium and things all over the place even now. They tell me. Who tell you? asked Cyril. But the sand fa fairy frowned and began to dig very fast with its f furry hands. Oh, don't go, they all cried. Tell us more about when it was meg megatheriums for breakfast. Was the world like this then? It stopped digging. Not a bit, it said. It was nearly all sand where I lived, and coal grew on trees, and the periwinkles were as big as tea trays. You find them now. They they are turned into stone. We sand fairies used to live on the seashore, and the children used to come with their little flint spades and flint pails and make castles for us to live in. That's, that's thousands of years ago, but I hear that children still build castles on the sand. It's difficult to break yourself of a habit. But why did you stop living in the castles? asked Robert. It's a sad story, said the Samit gloomily. It was because they would build moats to the castles and the, nest, the nasty wet bubbling sea used to come in. And of course, as soon as a sand fairy got wet, got wet it caught cold and generally died. And so there got to be fewer and fewer. And uh, whenever you found a fairy and had a wish, you used to wish for a big megatherium and eat twice as much as you wanted because it might be weeks before you got another wish. And did you get wet? Robert inquired. The sand fairy shuddered. Only once, it said. The end of the twelfth hair of my top left of my top left whisker. I feel the place still in damp weather. 
It was only once, but it was quite enough for me. I went away as soon as the sun had dried my poor dear whisker. I scurried away to the back of the beach and dug myself a house deep in warm dry sand, and there I've been ever since. And the sea changed its lodgings afterwards. And now I'm not going to tell you another thing. Just one more, please, said the children. Can you give wishes now? Of course, said it. Didn't I give you yours a few minutes ago? You said, I wish you'd come out, and I did. Oh, please, mayn't we have another? Yes, but be quick about it. I'm tired of you. I dare say you have often thought what you would do if you had three visits given you and have this des despised the old man and his wife in the black pudding story and felt certain that if you had the chance you could sing of three really useful wishes without a moment's hesitation. These children had often talked to this matter over, but now the chance had suddenly come to them, they could not make up their minds. Quick, said the sand fairy crossly. No one could sing of anything, only Antia did manage to remember a private wish of her own and Jane's, which they had never told the boys. She knew the boys would not care about it, but still it was better than nothing. I wish we were all as beautiful as the day, she said in a great hurry. The children looked at each other, but each could see that the others were not any better looking than usual. The, the Psamid pushed out his long eyes and seemed to be holding its breath and swelling itself out till it was twice as fat and furry as before. Suddenly it let its breath go in a long sigh. I'm really afraid I can't manage it, it said apologetically. I must be out of practice. The children were horribly disappointed. Oh, do try again, this they said. Well, said the sand fairy, the fact is I was keeping back a little strength to give the rest of you your wishes, your wishes with. If you'll be contented with one wish a day among the lot of you, I dare say I can screw myself up to it. Do you agree to that? Yes, oh yes, said Jane, Jane and Antia. The boys nodded. They did not believe the sand fairy could do, the, could do it. You can always make girls believe things much easier than you can boys. It stretched out. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so nicely read. Uh, let's have a look, uh, April, at the individual words. Okay. Okay, so uh, the first one is Anthea. Anthea is a name. Uh, it's not actually a very common name anymore, but that's how we pronounce it in the UK. Anthea. Try it. An uh, Anthea. Anthea. So the yeah. stress is at the first syllable. Yeah, the stress Anthea. is on an Anthea. Um, and then frowned. It's long owl. Frowned. Frowned. Yes. Can, frowned. You, can you think of what a frown looks like? My eyebrows. Frowned. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, your eyebrows go together, your mouth goes down a bit, your nose might wrinkle up. Not sure about that. You frown. Good. <laughs> and then the next one is afterwards. It's the uh. Not wards, woods, afterwards. Afterwards or afterwards? Afterwards. That's afterwards. it. That's it. And then you, you corrected yourself the first time with his hands, but I think you've still got this sort of it's fury. Now, the way you say it, it sounds too much like fury. Fury is, um, oh, hang on. Fury is intense anger. Yeah, she was furious. Okay, uh, fast and furious, yeah, fury. 
<laughs> but it's fur, so it's furry. So it's that er uh sound, furry. Furry. That's it, furry. yeah. I know you're going to get it, like, if you practice it a bit, just to get it in your head that it's furry. And just think of fur, yeah? The fur on a pussycat, okay? Now, the next one, I just want to point out, you say castles, people also say castles, okay? I tend to say castles because castles are posh, but castles is also correct, okay? And then the last one is about the stress again. Now, in this case, again, the U, if you notice, is in italics. And so when he asked the Samiad um, this question, the stress is on the U. And did you get wet? And did you get wet? That's it. Excellent. Well done. Yeah. So you personally. Did it happen to you? <laughs> okay. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, that that uh, I can screw myself up to it. Uh, it sounds to me a little bit... Uh, strange screw up that i uh, here that means that uh, uh, I that's can a do mess that. up huh? yeah uh, if you screw up uh, it's a bit rude but if you screw up it means you make a mess of something but this has got the reflexive verb myself ah. in it yeah to screw yourself up to something means to prepare yourself in a sort of nervous energy way so i'm screwing myself up for the next uh, for my german exam yeah <laughs> With my sweaty palms and my dry mouth. <laughs> yeah, so these phrasal verbs, especially when there's an idiomatic part to them, uh, you have to be careful on where the um, where the stress is and what 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 actually what else is there. Is there another verb in there? Is there another? If you screw it up, you've messed it up. Yeah, you've mismanaged it. Um, if you're a screw up, you're a mess. Okay. <laughs> but if you screw yourself up to something, it just means in this context, get yourself ready. Okay. Okay. And how do I pronounce that uh, name? Samiat or Samit or? I say Samiat. Um, <laughs> Samiat. I, I've no idea. I've never met one. I've never been able to ask him. <laughs> You can also, oh, by the way, you can also screw up your face. Now, that might mean, you know, you think about it, you think, oh, I've made a mess of my face. It doesn't mean that. It's like a frown where you make your face look very pinched. If you imagine if you're eating a lemon, yeah, and you, you screw up your mouth. Okay, so do be careful. So, and to screw up the nerve to do something just means to gather yourself together, ready to do something very difficult, like a uh, to brace yourself, if you like, ready to do an exam, maybe. So again, those words, you think you know one meaning, always check online, use the um, etymology dictionaries, etc. And you'll find there's quite often more than one meaning and it's context. Uh, dying sort, Eleanor. Mm? Uh, you <laughs> said that uh, you couldn't ask uh, Saint Ferry how to pronounce its name. No, they've all died out. They got wet. Yes, that's what, <laughs> yes, that's what I meant. I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> oh, endangered species of fairy, obviously. Indeed, endangered. Okay, so um, I think it's shiny to read next. Am I right? Are you okay to read shiny? Yes. Excellent. Oh, we've got um, we've got a bit of uh, feedback. So bear with me a second. Yes. I will mute my microphone whilst you're reading. Let me just. Okay, so whenever you're ready, Shiny. 
Okay, thank you. He stretched out his eyes farther than ever and swelled and swelled and swelled. I do hope it won't hurt itself, said Anthea. Oh, crack its skin, Robert said anxiously. Everyone was very much relieved when the sand fairy, after getting so big that it almost filled up the hole in the sun, suddenly I let out its breath and went back to its proper size. That's all right, he said, painting heavily. It'll come easier to moral. Did it hurt much? asked Anthea. Only my poor whisker, thank you, said he. But you are a kind of, a, you are a kind and thought of, thoughtful child. Good day. He scratched suddenly and fiercely with its hands and feet, and it disappeared in the sand. Then the children looked at each other, and each child suddenly found itself alone with three perfect strangers, all radiantly beautiful. They stood for some moments in perfect silence. Each thought that its brothers and sisters had wandered off, and that these strange children had stolen up unnoticed while it was watching the swelling form of the sand fairy, Anthea spoke first. Excuse me, she said very politely to Jen, who now had enormous, enormous blue eyes and a cloud of russet hair. But have you seen two little boys and a little girl anywhere about? I was just going to ask you that, said Jen, and then a serial cried. Why, it's you. I know the hole in your pen for. You are Jen, aren't you? And you are the panther. I can see your dirty handkerchief that you forgot to change after you'd cut your thumb. Quickie. The wish has come off. After all, I say, am I as handsome as you are? If you are, I liked you much better as you were before, said Anthea decidedly. You look like the picture of the young uh, choirista choir choir with your golden hair. You will die young. I shouldn't wonder, and if that's Robert, he's like an e Italian organ grinder. His hair is all black. You two girls are like Christmas cards, then that's all. See the Christmas cards, said Robert angrily, and Jane's hair is simply carrots. It was indeed, indeed of that fiend. Uh, financial tint so much admired by <laughs> I think Chinese got a bit of an issue. <laughs> Sounding little doggy, yeah, shiny. <laughs> we'll give her a couple of moments to sort her doggy out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now you know, now you guys know what it's like when Laika sets off. <laughs> oh dear. It's okay, Shiny. Okay, I, I've muted Shiny for now on the recording, so it doesn't go out into... Uh... <laughs> okay, don't forget, if anything like that happens, try to mute quickly and then sort your 
dog, cat, postman out. <laughs> oh dear, that was funny. Ah, oh. I didn't know Shiny had a dog. It is so difficult to to think uh, that you have to mute. I know, I know. Times. I'm so I, used to I, it I now. To... <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember once go you to got the, the postman. The yeah, you had to yeah. go to the door and we got and the you, whole yeah, recording. You still have your headset. You still yes. have your headset. <laughs> and then it pulls off <laughs> your head. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my headset, I've done that before. I'm, and again, you get used to it, you know, so I, I always know to take my headset. But the first few times I was running sessions like this online, um, I'd stand up, walk off, and my headset would suddenly go boing because it was still attached to, via the wires. Uh, the cord to uh, and it would pull off my head that was really sore hurt my ears a couple of times oh dear i fostered it and i regret no don't regret it why regret it just give it something else to do that's it oh, don't you know i've got a doggy like that too i didn't know you, you fostered it permanently or you're just looking after it shiny So is it now your doggy? Yeah. Hey, we want photos. <laughs> uh, she's ugly. <laughs> That's even better. Everybody's got beautiful dogs. Ugly dog. I mean, you know, like her. She's no. She's no oil painting. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I'm good for you for looking after her as well and taking her on. Thank you. Okay, so um, we got to the Venetian tint, I think. Um, well, it's no good. So if you finish off just this... Um, okay, if you just finish that sentence and then we can give you your feedback, okay? Okay. Uh, sorry, which sentence? I've just put it into live chat, into um, local chat, yeah, okay? Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, it's no use finding fault with each other, said Anthea. Let's get the lamp and lock it home to di dinner. The serpents will admire us most awfully. You'll see. Very good. Well done. <laughs> okay, so, by the way, your puppies, um, your pups... Um, pronunciation was perfect <laughs> woof woof yap yap no corrections for your puppy a couple of corrections for you <laughs> so when you're saying or try to avoid saying the o sound it's or like or okay so try it or Uh, shiny, try it or. Oh. Mm, you're still sounding a little bit like O. Oh. This or that. Oh. This or that. Uh, this or that. That's more like it. That's Good. She's 10 years old. Oh, she's about the same age as Laika. Laika turned 11 last week. She's 11 now. And she's naughty too. But they're more fun when they're naughty. <laughs> okay, the next one is sand fairy. Like air, the air that we breathe. Fairy. Try it. Sand fairy. Much better, good. Then scratched. Scratched. Yeah, lovely. Um, this one's a common one. When you, when you say it, sometimes your brain reads that. But it's ask or ask, not ax. Ask or ask. Try it. Ask. That's much better. Good, good, good. I bet your brain will still misread it and you'll say ax. But a lot of people do it. That You just have to get so used to it that you don't even think about it anymore. Ask. Okay. Then the next one, it's again, it's a name like Anthea, but this one's Cyril. 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 Yeah, and Cyril is also, uh, it's not Cyril, it's Cyril. And it's no. kind of dying out. There's not many Cyrils in the world anymore, I'm afraid. Okay. It'll come back into popularity, I'm sure, if we get a royal family member called Cyril. 
everyone will start calling their sprog Cyril. But anyway, the next one, um, we've got the word choir, choir, and somebody who sings in a choir is a chorister. So it's a hard C sound, chorister. Try it. Chorister. Perfect. Then the organ grinder. The organ grinder. Yes. Um, there is a saying, you might have heard it. I want to speak to the organ grinder, not his monkey. <laughs> Has anybody here ever heard that one? No? Okay. <laughs> well, an organ grinder is normally somebody like a street musician, plays for money in the streets with an organ that you turn the handle and that's grinding the organ. Okay. And in the past, I don't think it's very common anymore, but in the past they would have a monkey, a dancing monkey with them. And nowadays, if somebody says to you, I want to speak to the organ grinder, not the monkey, it's very rude. <laughs> it's very, it's, um, uh, it's an insult because they're saying, I want to speak to the person in charge, not the person, not the subordinate. OK, so <laughs> don't use it. But if you ever hear it, know that that person's being rude and uncouth. OK. <laughs> Okay, next one, uh, the last one, Venetian. 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 Yes. In this case, they're talking about that red um, that you can get in hair, that really intense red. Uh, you can also talk, you might hear about it with Venetian glass. Glassware from Venice is Venetian. Okay, so somebody from Venice is Venetian. OK, so if anybody goes to Kanganice's um, session on idioms on Sunday, do take that one. I want to speak the organ to the organ grinder, not the monkey. <laughs> That'll put the cat among the pigeons. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Any questions? No? Everybody happy? So the next person to read then is Moz. Uh, Moz, are you okay to read? Oh, by the way, if there are no questions, do say no because or type up no. <laughs> I, I know you've heard me. Otherwise, I think my mic's muted or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we've got another doggy. Don't let don't let Shiny's doggy <laughs> hear your doggy, Moz. We'll, we'll end up with a conversation between the two. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I have four. It might be have overpowered my <laughs> my voice. Yes. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> okay, whenever you, whenever you're ready, Mars. Uh, we can do this, then. Uh, baby was just waking up when they got to him, and not one of the children, but was relieved to find that he at least was not as beautiful as the day, but just the same as usual. I suppose he's too young to have wishes, naturally, said Jane. We shall have to mention him, especially next time. Anthea ran forward and held out her arms. Come, then, she said. The baby looked at her disapprovingly and put a sandy pink thumb in his mouth. Anthea was his favorite sister. Come then, she said. Give, give long, said the baby. Come to own pussy, said Jane. Wants to pan, pan, wants my panty, said the lamb dismal. And his lip trembled. Here come on, veteran, said Robert. Come and have a yiddy on Yobi's back. Yeah, 
Narky Narky Boy, howled the baby, giving way altogether. Then the children knew the worst. The baby did not know them. They looked at each other in despair, and it was terrible to each in this dire emergency to meet only the beautiful eyes of perfect strangers instead of the merry, friendly, commonplace, twinkling, jolly little eyes of its own brothers and sisters. This is most truly awful, said Cyril, when he had tried to lift up the lamp, and the lamp had scratched like a cat and bellowed like a bull. We've got to make friends with him. I can't carry him home screaming like that. Fancy having to make friends with our own baby. It's too silly. That, however, was exactly what they had to do. It took over an hour and the task was not rendered uh, rendered in any easier by the fact that the lamb was by this time as hungry as lion as a lion and as, as thirsty as a desert at last he co consented to allow these strangers to carry him home by turns but he refused to hold on in such acquaintances he was dead weight and most exhausting thank goodness we're home said jane staggering through the iron gate to where martha the nursemaid stood at the front door shading her eyes with her hand and looking out anxiously here do take baby martha snatched the baby from her arms thanks be he's safe back she said where are the others and whoever to goodness gracious are all of you <laughs> we're us of course uh, we are us of course said robert and who's us you're when you're at home asked martha scornfully i tell you it's us only we're beautiful as the day said cereal and cereal and this the others and were jolly hungry let us in and don't be silly don't be a silly idiot martha merely dratted cereal's impudence and tried to shut the door in his face i know we look different but i'm anthea and we're so tired and it's long past dinner time then go home to your dinners whoever you are and if our children put you up the to this to this playing acting you can tell them from me me they'll catch it so no so they know what to expect with that she did bang the door Cyril rang the bell violently no answer presently cook put her head out of the bed of a bedroom window and said if you don't take yourselves off and that precious sharp i'll go and fetch the police and she slammed the slammed down the window and it's no good said An anthea oh do do come away before we get some we get sent to prison the boy said it was nonsense and the law of england couldn't put you in prison for just being as as beautiful as the day but all the same they followed the others out into the lane we shall be put our proper selves after sunset i suppose said jane i don't know cyril said sadly it mayn't be like be like that now things have changed a good deal since megatherium times oh cried anthea suddenly perhaps we shall turn into a stone at, at sunset like the megatheriums did so that there mayn't be any of us left over for the next day she began to cry so did jane even the boys turned pale no one had the 
the heart to say anything. Very it good. It was horrible afternoon. Okay. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely yeah. read. Okay, so uh, it's a really tough one as well, that one. Um, so let me just add a couple of things that we can talk about. Okay. Hard to breathe. <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, very true. That, that last bit, very unfair. But there you go. Let's look at the individual words first. The first one, nice little adverb. Uh, we've got the word dismal as an adjective, but the adverb is dismally. So you've got z in the middle, dis, dismally. Try it. Uh, uh, dis dismally. Yeah, we've got dismal weather at the moment. Really not right. fun. <laughs> okay, then lips. Uh, lips? Yes, yeah, so your lips. Yeah, the things you kiss with are your lips. Okay, lips. Uh. Okay. And bellowed. Not belowed, bellowed. Uh, uh, bellowed. Yes, Hello, to shout yeah. really loudly, to bellow. <laughs> Come here, bellowed the teacher. <laughs> okay, the next one is allow. Not low, not a low. Allow, to allow somebody uh, to do something, to give them permission. Yeah, allow. Try it. Uh, allow. Much better. And the last one, I know you know how we don't roll the R's anymore? Well, sometimes the R is silent. In this case, it's a silent R. Iron. Uh, iron. Uh, iron. Yeah. Uh, iron. Iron. <laughs> like a lion in iron. Zion. Uh, iron. <laughs> <Are> you, April? <laughs> I am iron like God. a lion in Zion. <laughs> they all rhyme. <laughs> Good. Okay, now the next one, I don't even... Okay, that, oh, that little part that of the book, that's baby speech. Okay, so the baby is stringing words together. They're nonsense. They're not actually... But I think this first one is gway. Gway long. It means go away along. Okay, go away. Gway long, oh. said the baby. Oh. It's oh. like goo goo, ga ga. <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> want Betty <Betty> buys. <laughs> you really miss out as English learners on baby speech. We grow up with it. <laughs> baby hungry, no grammar, just noises and, you know, trying to get your meaning across. <laughs> so I'm not even going to ask you to repeat that one. Okay, well done. Uh, you get a smiley for rendered. Rendered. Okay. Now, this one, I just wanted to confirm everybody knows what this means. Who's us when you're at home? Who are you when you're at home? Do you know what that means? Who are you when you're at home? Any ideas? Who are you at home? So, Moz, who are you when you're at home? What does it mean? Uh -uh. Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm with my mom. My ah, no, no. <laughs> That's who are you with when you're at home? It's just an idiom. It's really saying, who are you really? You know how we have different different aspects of ourselves we, we have the person that's us at work we have the person that's us when we're with friends we have the person that's us when we're with our grand grandparents and we have to behave okay so this is saying who are you really who are you when you're at home when you're relaxed when you're being yourself who are you really okay okay okay, okay. so it's nothing to do with actually being <laughs> at home <laughs> it's an idiomatic expression Okay, and then this one is just, I'm Cyril and these are the others. So this is about stress and intonation. So have a listen carefully. I'm Cyril and these are the others and we're jolly hungry. Try it. Um, I'm Cyril and this the, uh, the, these are the others and we're jo jolly hung hungry. Yeah, ca careful with these. These is long E. And a z sort of vibrating um, sound. These, z, not these, these. Uh, let me try again. Uh, um, serious. And these are the others. And we're jolly hungry. Very good. Yes. Yeah. So if you look at the. Um, uh, 
the, bit. the yeah. actual symbols, the phonetic symbols, you'll see the and then e and then z, these. Okay, this, these. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and this last one, you very rarely hear this nowadays, but people still say it. Maint. Do you know what it means? Maint. Uh, may not. Yeah. May not. And we. That's it. I get it. And you might also hear mightn't. It's this short form. Maint. Mightn't. Mightn't is more common uh, now, I think, than maint. But down southwest. You might still hear maint and up north a little bit, maint. Uh, I maint do that. I mightn't do that. I might do that. I might not. It would be more likely. But uh, you might still hear it or see it. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is there any idiom to in the UK? Because I noticed this. You know, who's us when you're at home? I've never read on American idioms before. <laughs> I think it, this is from the UK. It, is it for I don't UK know or... the etymology of it. I know we. I mean, remember, I've never been to America. Um, I'd be very surprised if they never said it. Don't restrict yourself to idiom books, by the way. Books about idioms will always be restrictive. Okay, there's the books that they write, mm -hmm. and then there's. I, I'm sure people would say that. In if any American stumbles across this video and would like to come and tell us, no, we would never say that, or yes, we say that all the time on the East Coast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's a common saying, uh, so I'd be very surprised if it was never used in... in... Uh, uh, okay, Lynn. Uh, how about UK? Do, do they have idioms too? <laughs> in the UK, do we have idioms? We invented yes. idioms, Moz. <laughs> <laughs> We're the ones who came up with the best idioms in the world. I don't. Of course we have idioms. We have thousands of them. Think you've not. Come, do you ever actually explore the network? <laughs> okay, let me let me just give you a page. Okay, and these are just a little, a few, basically. These are just a few. I'm I'm slowly expanding on it, but uh, there you go. So. We've got idioms about pretty much anything. And on top of idioms, we have sayings. And on top of sayings, we have um, phrases. And on top of phrases, we have slang. So, yes, of course. <laughs> okay, yeah, shan't as well. Yes, well done, Eleanor. Shan't, shall not. And that's often said by children. No, I shan't. <laughs> Shan't, in other words. <laughs> Go and do your homework. Shan't. <laughs> okay, so tough guy, sitting comfortably. Uh, Lynn? April, yes? Talking about uh, that baby stock. Uh, oh, so yeah. <laughs> Yidi and Narki, it uh, doesn't exist, maybe. No, well, not actually, uh... Narki does exist. Um, uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah, if you're feel this is slang, of course, uh, but if you're feeling narky, it sh it means you're being really irritable. You're you're bad tempered. Oh, he's so narky. I can't bear him. Yeah, so narky does exist. Narky boy, as in bad tempered boy, go away. But again, it's baby talk. So who knows what baby meant? <laughs> You found it. Well done. Yeah, annoying, narky, narky to me is more bad tempered. Um, yeah, if you get a narky teacher, it's horrible. It's you know because they're just always. They they wouldn't say oh um, you know here's your correction they'd go I've told you this before you should know this by now you know <laughs> it's the sort of teachers I used to have. <laughs> They were always narky. Maybe it was me. I made them narky. I don't know. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so tough guy, are you with us? Yes. Yay. Do you know where we're up to? Yep. Okay, so if you, um, let me just check that everything's recording. Yep, so if you'd like to, whenever you're ready, if you'd like to start. Okay. It was a horrible afternoon. There was no house near where the children could uh, bag a crust of bread or even a glass of water. They were afraid to go to the village because they had seen Martha go down there with a basket and there was a local constable 
true they were they were all as beautiful as the day but that is a poor comfort when you are as hungry as a hunter and as thirsty as a sponge three times they tried in vain to get the servants in the white house to let them in and listen to their tale and robert went alone hoping to be able to climb in at once uh, at one of the back windows and so open the door to the others but all the windows were out of reach and martha emptied a tall jug of cold water over him from a top window and said go along with you you nasty little i italian monkey it came at last to their sitting down in a row under the hedge which uh, with their feet in a dry ditch waiting for sunset and wondering whether wondering whether uh, when the sun did set they would turn into stone or uh, only into their own na own old natural se uh, selves and uh, each of them still felt lonely and among strangers and tried not to look at the others for though their voices were their own their faces were so radiantly beautiful as to be quite uh, irritating to look at i don't believe we shall turn to stone said robert breaking a long miserable silence because the sand that he would give us hit or uh, he'd give, give us another uh, wish to uh, tomorrow sorry wish tomorrow and uh, he couldn't if we were stone could he the other said no but they weren't all at all com uh, comforted another silence longer and more uh, was broken by cereals suddenly saying i don't want to frighten you girls but i believe it's beginning with me already my foot's quite dead i'm turning to stone i know i am and so will you in a minute never mind said robert kindly perhaps you'll be the only stone one and the rest of us will be all right and will cherish your statue and hang garlands on it but when it turned out that cyril's foot had only gone to sleep through his sitting too long with it under him and when it came to life in an agony of pins and needles the others were quite cross giving us such a fright for nothing said anthea uh, the third and miserablest silence of all was broken by jane she said if we do come out of this all right we will ask the samiat to make it so that the servants don't notice anything different no matter what wishes we have the others only grunted they were too rich even to make uh, good resolutions at last hunger and fright and crossness and tiredness four very nasty things all joined together to bring one nice thing and that was sleep the children lay asleep in a row with their beautiful eyes shut and their beautiful mouths open anthea woke up the sun had set and the twilight twilight was coming on anthea pinched herself very hard to make sure and when she found she could uh, still feel pinching she decided that she was not stone and then she pinched the others they also were soft wake up she said almost in tears for joy it's all right we are not stone uh, and oh cyril how nice and ugly you do look with your old freckles and your brown hair and your little eyes and so do you all uh, she added so that they might feel jealous when they when they got home they were very much scolded by martha who told them about the strange children one second uh, oh it was i okay a good looking lot i must say but that impudent I know," said Robert, who knew by experience how helpless it would be, tried to explain things to Martha. And uh, where on earth have you been all this time, you naughty little things? You, you, uh, in the lane. Why didn't you come home hours ago? We couldn't because of them," said Anthea. "Who? The children who who were as beautiful as the day." 
They kept us there till after sunset. We couldn't come back till they had gone. You don't know how we hated them. Oh, do. Do give us some supper. We are so hungry. Hungry? I should think so, said Martha angrily. Out all day like this, well, I hope. It will be a lesson to you not to go picking up with strange children down here after measles like, as likely as not. Now mind, if you see them again, don't you speak to them. <clears throat> no one word, nor so much as a look, but come straight away and tell me I'll spoil, the, I'll spoil their beauty for them. If you ever, uh, if ever we do see them again, we'll tell you, Anthea said, and Robert fixing his eyes fondly on the cold beef that was being uh, brought in on a tray by cook, added in heartless, heartless undertones. Uh, and and we'll take jolly good care. We never do see them again. Never have. Do I need to good. continue? Yep, that's that's it. Well done. Nice to. Yeah, I thought we'd go to the end because uh, it's nice. Always nice to uh, start off on a new chapter <laughs> next week. <laughs> okay, so very nicely read. Um, I'm going to point out a couple of things that your brain is tricking you on again, tough guy words that you're uh, saying and that's not what's written so there's one word as well which has got two exclamation marks because it's really not something you want to say so yeah careful I'm gonna have to say this out loud oh no okay the first word is just beg to beg okay if you beg you're a beggar beg try it beg. that's beg. it beg yeah then a constable, it's it's a term for a policeman of a certain rank in the UK, so quite low. They're the ones you see out on the beat normally, constable. Try it. Constable. Not constable. 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 Okay, constable. Not stable. Is it right? <laughs> it's the uh sound. That's a uh, constable. Constable. That's more like it. Yeah, I see the a uh, con or constable. Okay, constable. Constable. Yeah. Constable. Good. Better. Okay, you need to work a bit with it. Have a listen online to how it's pronounced okay. in different voices. So have a listen to this. Constable. Okay, because uh, Indians say constable. Instead ah, of really? <laughs> Constable, interesting yeah. <laughs> yes i mean people would probably understand you but in british um english it's constable and it's of course a police officer of a certain rank okay yes i know okay <clears throat> so the next one is um oh bear with me a second okay oh a second i've got a problem with my computer slow down a bit Okay, the next one is sponge. A sponge, not a sponge, sponge. Sponge. Yeah, sponge. SpongeBob SquarePants, yeah? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's worth remembering that one. Okay, so it's SpongeBob. Yeah, okay. SpongeBob. I used to say SpongeBob. Ah, no, it's SpongeBob. <laughs> okay, SpongeBob. <laughs> sponge. Sponge. <laughs> there you go. Then vein. Vein. Wayne. Not Wayne. Wayne. V. You've got to get the V sound. W is W. V has a V sound. Like vibrating. V. Vein. Try it. Vein. Vein. That's better, yeah. What vein. happens with your mouth is your teeth go just onto your bottom lip to say V. And then you vibrate the bottom lip a bit. Vein. Vein. Much better. Good. Good. I was almost like a German saying the were sound. That's what Germans actually say f normally for uh, v, but uh, were they often say um, as well. So <laughs> don't want to sound like a German. <laughs> then the next one's a bit like constable. It's comforted. 
The only time you say comfort is when you're singing the hymn Tidings of Comfort and Joy. Honestly, otherwise don't bother. Comforted. Comforted. That's it. Good. And then this next one, really important. You've got to get the th sound. Soft, not like the. It's the softer th third. Third. Try it. Oh, it's pretty difficult for me. Uh, mm. Third. Third. That's third. better. Because if you say third, that's another name for a poo. Okay. So you really want to get that one right. There's your incentive to practice the softer sound okay third so third, third in line to the throne okay that's a good one to practice third in line to the throne try that third third in line to be to the sorry third in line to the throne that's it. Throne, yeah. right? throne. 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 Again, that th. You don't want to say third in line. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's fun, but you don't want to say it. <laughs> okay, the next one. I know we, we often have these silent E's, but this isn't. This is wretched. 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 Okay. Yeah. Wretched. You wretched boy. <laughs> so for once, it's not a silent E. Then Cyril. I know it's Y, but we say C. Cyril. Cyril. Yes, yeah, Cyril, but Cyril is normal. And yeah, that's okay. These next two, your brain went, I know what this word is, and didn't read what was written. The first one is hopeless, oh. not helpless, without hope. Okay. Hopeless, hopeless. Hopeless. Yeah, the situation okay. was hopeless. hopeless. Okay. They were helpless because the situation was hopeless. Okay. And then heartfelt, not heartless. Heartless means cruel. Okay, <laughs> okay. heartfelt. Okay, so heartfelt. Did I say heartless? Yeah, <laughs> you said heartless. Okay. <laughs> you don't believe me, you can watch the replay. Honestly, you said heartless. But heartfelt means, you know, you really mean it. Whereas no, no, heartless is you do. don't have a heart. <laughs> Okay, again, your brain went, I know what comes after woke, but it's not up. Yes, we wake up, but this was written Anthea woke first, not Anthea woke up. Anthea woke first. She was the okay. first to wake up. Okay, so try it. Anthea woke okay. first. Anthea woke first. Okay, and then so that they might not feel jealous. You forgot the not. You, you decided okay. that they must feel jealous. <laughs> but this, this is saying that she, tried, she said it so that they wouldn't. Probably if it said would not feel jealous, you would have got it. But this might not feel jealous. It's just another way of saying wouldn't feel jealous. Okay, it's, it's literary English. Okay, so try it so that they might not feel jealous. Feel jealous. Good. And then the last one, pins and needles. Uh, you said it perfectly. I just want to check. Do you know what it is? Pins and needles. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, just wait for a second, actually. Uh, my laptop is about to die. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye laptop. Ran out of battery charge. Okay, I have just attached it to the charger. Uh, okay. Just let me wait for Phew. I cannot see anything. It's all blank. Oh gosh. Oh. Okay. Well, we can hear you fine. <laughs> okay. And if you disappear, we know okay. what's happened. Pins and needles. Um. And this is an open question to anybody. Then, have you ever suffered from pins and needles? Yes, of course. That's uh, exactly described in the text. Uh, if it's a little, little blood in your leg because uh, you are sitting on it, something. Yeah, like but that, that that's feeling numb. Yeah. The pins and needles follow yeah. when the blood starts to flow. And it's almost like somebody is pushing needles and pins into your skin. Very little prickles. And that's what we call pins yeah. and needles. And so it begins. Needles and pins. <laughs> And so it begins, uh, needles and pins, uh, <laughs> because of all my pride. 
So we all suffer from needles and pins. If you want to experience it, cut off your blood flow and then let it back. But don't do it. It's, it's not a good idea to cut off your blood flow. But it's that sensation of the blood returning to your fingers or your toes. And then it feels as if somebody is prickling them. Okay, Nothing to do with actual pins and needles, but it's the feeling. It's a sensation. Okay, Needles and pins are... I'll try and find the, and so it begins, Needles and Pins. Where's the Needles and Pins song? Yeah, The Searchers, Needles and Pins. Yeah, great song. I'll share it on the forum. Okay. <laughs> so the feeling of numbness is when the blood's been cut off and the pins and needles are the feeling, the sensation you get as the blood returns. Okay. Any questions? But uh, to be on pins and needles, that's something else. Mm, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I wouldn't say it. I kind of reserve pins and needles um, for that sensation. I would say to be on tenterhooks. You mean when you're anticipating something? April. April, are you, can you hear me? Um, to be on pins and needles, uh, I will say, oh, my addiction is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, to be uh, very, very, um, yeah, you can still. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I just don't yeah. use it. I know what it means, but I don't oh, okay. use it. I would use for that to be on tenterhooks, okay? When you're really anxious about, so I'm on tenterhooks waiting for my German exam to come. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's just yeah, the same meaning. Yeah, so I, but I just wouldn't say. I I would say, um, yeah. Uh, let me think. What what else might I say? Um, yeah, you might. No, I, that pins and needles one. I don't like it. It might be a more American thing. I've never used it in that way. Pins and needles to me is the tingling sensation. Okay, um, I was on tenterhooks, I was on edge, I was, yeah, I wouldn't, I was waiting with bated breath. <laughs> Actually, that would be more immediate, to wait with bated breath would mean something's about to happen. That's when you hold your breath and you're like, <gasps> and you don't breathe because you're waiting to see what's going to happen. <laughs> But on tender hooks is what I tend to use instead of on pins and needles. I'll ask I'll ask my nephews and nieces whether they say on pins and needles. Maybe it's a more young person thing, but I think it's more likely to be an American one. Okay. Any other questions before we finish? Uh, no questions, thanks. Okay. Maybe we can talk about next week what you think about if you were so beautiful. Would you want to be that beautiful? They obviously didn't like it in the end once they got what they wanted. They didn't uh, really have much fun with it at all, did they? Bless them. <laughs> so it is uh, as beautiful as the day, but as ugly as the night. <laughs> <laughs> I like the night, so no, because <laughs> the night, because the night belongs to lovers. <laughs> No, as beautiful as the day just means extremely beautiful. Yeah, I don't think we said we would say as ugly as the night. Um, I'd say. Uh, oh, we said that. Do uh, you? Oh, we no. say that. Yeah, as no. ugly as the night. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, as ugly as sin, we would say. As ugly as sin. I've never heard anybody say as ugly as the night because the night to me is lovely. <laughs> Cold.
Coyote Ugly. That's an American one for uh, Moz. <laughs> but I like coyotes too. I don't know. I don't know where they come off with this Coyote Ugly. <laughs> okay. And what's ugly after all? That's a case of just. That's it's all. It's a case of perspective. Yeah. So I wouldn't say as ugly as the night. Yeah, exactly. The moon is beautiful, isn't it? Indeed it is. Yes. Oh. So, no. As dark as the night, yes. But not as ugly as... As dark as Ebony loves Labour's loss. Yeah. Absolutely. But I haven't found many... I don't find many um, idioms about the night that are very negative, really. I mean... Yeah. You're back, but you can't hear anything. Ah, you're back, but you're... Yeah, no white dot, tough guy. No white dot, but we're finishing. But we are finishing. Okay, so there's a reminder. Make sure your uh, laptop is fully charged <laughs> before you join the session. And Mars, don't push shiny into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we will uh, leave it there for this week we'll carry on next week everything should run as normal next week do keep an eye on the calendar uh, as i say i've got some um time off uh one to prepare for german uh for the next few months i'll be on and off a little bit but i think i haven't added them in yet but i think marion will be able to run some sessions on skype whilst i'm away so do keep an eye on the calendar but next week everything should run as normal it's kind of starting the week after okay anyway thanks very much for coming and for reading did a great job everybody well done and i'll see you next time take care bye